Hello and welcome to Auten Math. We've got some exciting work to do. This is a rather lengthy topic, so hold on to your hats while we go through a lesson on proving lines are parallel. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to talk about the quadratic formula because in some of the uh, problems that you'll see in your work, you're going to need to use this to find the solutions uh, for x in a quadratic function or a quadratic equation. And uh, those solutions would be uh, when you have a quadratic function equal to zero. In other words, we're trying to find the roots or zeros of the quadratic function in some cases where you can't factor it easily. So I'm giving you the quadratic formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a because you'll need that in some of the problems. Uh, I also want to talk about coordinate proofs. Uh, in the book, they're going to slip in a couple of coordinate proofs. And I want to explain what a coordinate proof is before you address those problems uh, for your homework. So a coordinate proof is just a proof that involves calculations. It could be a distance uh, formula, midpoint, or slope formula. And the process of establishing the validity of an assertion based on coordinates in a coordinate plane, so an xy plane. So typically, coordinate proofs involve the relationship of variable variables in coordinate form. So we could say that uh, some points are a and b, not necessarily a given value, because we're trying to prove it true for all cases. So regardless of what a and b are, we're trying to show that that's true. So I'm going to give you an example here, and the example is prove that the distance from the origin to point a, b is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. This is a very straightforward coordinate proof. Uh, because we know that the distance it is going to be this length here, this length here from the origin to point AB. Well, we recognize that we've just created here a right triangle. So the distance of one of the legs is A, and the distance of well, the other leg is B. So in reality, we're just trying to find this distance of the blue line, which is equal to C the hypotenuse. Well, we recall that the uh, in the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, uh, or the leg of a right triangle squared plus the leg of a right triangle squared is equal to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, that same right triangle squared. So in this case, I know that c then, what we define as c, is going to be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So coordinate proofs typically take on a paragraph proof form and, again, involve variables instead of actual numbers substituted for the coordinates uh, or numbers that you typically see in an xy plane. All right, moving on. So let's go through some de definitions that we need to know um, before we get to uh, proving lines or parallel. First is an exterior angle. An exterior angle is an angle that is supplementary to an adjacent interior angle. So here I have an extension of this triangle side, and this angle here that I'm going to highlight is the exterior angle to that triangle, or to this other angle that's within the triangle. So what we call the adjacent interior angle is the angle that's adjacent to the exterior angle, and then the remote interior angles are the angles that are not in the triangle that are not adjacent to the exterior angle. So the exterior angle defines the remote interior angles and also the adjacent angle. And the remote interior angles and the adjacent angle are going to be relative to where the exterior angle is placed. Okay, so I say remote interior angles are relative to the exterior angle. There are angles in the triangle that are not adjacent to the exterior angle. So we could change, see as I go back and forth, here I have my exterior angle same triangle, but now my exterior angle becomes this angle here. And so my adjacent angle and my remote interior angles change as well because they're relative to where the exterior angle is placed. In the same fashion, I can create an exterior angle on the other side, the third side of the triangle. And now my adjacent interior angle changes as well as my remote interior angle. So again, Remote interior angles are the angles in the triangle that are not the adjacent interior angle, and the adjacent interior angle is the angle that's adjacent to the exterior angle. 
Okay, so as part of the process of uh, defining uh, theorems and writing the inequalities, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a theorem, and then I'm going to ask you to do some work. So the theorem is the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. Well, how do we know that that's true? So first, let's talk about the validity of this theorem. Well, if I say that if I say that the sum some of the measures of the angles in the triangle equal to 180 degrees. I can say that angle 2 plus angle uh, 6 plus angle 9 equal 180 degrees. Now I can also see that 2 is supplementary to 3, so I can say then that angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees. So I can rewrite these two equations as angle 6 plus angle 9 is equal to 180 degrees minus angle 2, and angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees minus angle 2. By substitution, then I can say that angle 6 plus angle 9 is equal to angle 3. And if that's the case, I know that angle 3 must be greater than 6 or 9 if angle 6 or 9 are any angles at all, if they're greater than 0. And if, that's, if they're not equal to 0, then I have a collapsed triangle. I don't have a triangle. So six and uh, angle 6 and angle 9 must have some measure in order for there to be a triangle. And therefore, angle 3 must be greater than either 6 or 9. So theorem 30 says the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angles. So remember, remote interior angles are relative to the exterior angle in question. So I say here's my exterior angle, and angle 9 and angle 6 are my re remote interior angles. We've just shown that angle 3 is congruent to angle 6 plus 9. So angle 3 must be greater than either s angle 6 or angle 9. So if I were to write uh, the inequalities that result from the uh, exterior angle uh, inequality theorem, which, is this, which this is called, uh, it would be 3 is greater than 6 or 9, angle 1 is greater than 6 or 9, angle 5 is greater than 2 or 9, angle 8 is greater than 2 or 9, angle 10 is greater than 2 or 6, Angle 11 is greater than 2 or 6. Okay, here we go uh, with our first set of big theorems. Theorem 31. Uh, if two lines are cut by a transversal such that two alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So in this case, um, if I have alternate interior angles that are congruent, that would be 3 and 6, then I know that L and M are parallel. So I can write this as if... 3, angle 3 is congruent to angle 6, then L is parallel to M. Line L is parallel to M. Similarly, I can say that if angle 4 is congruent to angle 5, then L and uh, line L is parallel to M. So why is this true, and should you just believe me or the book because they say it's true? Well, let's think about this for a second. Um, let's imagine that uh, I have my two lines, and I said there are L and M. Is that correct? I'm going to say they're L and M, or I'm going to say they're A and B. Let's say they're A and B. And line A and B are not parallel, which means that at some point in time, they're going to intersect, and they're going to form a triangle. And I'll go through this in just a second, uh, a little bit more formally. If, in an indirect proof, if they're not parallel, and then they intersect, they form a triangle, and... If angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent as part of a given, then we run into a problem because uh, the uh, exterior angle inequality theorem says that if I have an exterior angle, it's got to be greater than the either remote interior angle, either 2 or 3. So let's revisit this a little bit more formally in an indirect proof. All right, so I draw my two lines A and B. And I'm saying that A and B are uh, not parallel, which means at some point they intersect. I'm given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, so here I have my exterior angle and my remote interior angle. 
I'm given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And I want to prove that line A is parallel to line B. Okay, so going through an indirect proof, I would say if line A and line B were not parallel, then they would intersect at some point and form a triangle CDE. Since we know through the exterior angle inequality theorem that angle 1 must be greater than angle 2, and that exterior angle inequality theorem, remember, we learned uh, just a couple minutes ago, right? We learned just a couple minutes ago as we showed that 3, angle 3, the exterior angle had to be greater than 6 or 9. Let me just write exterior angle inequality theorem. We learned that angle 3 must be greater than either 6 or 9. And going back to the proof, since it was given that angle 1 is already congruent to 2, then I can't have a triangle formed by two intersecting lines. So the lines A and B must be parallel. All right, so we start with angle or theorem 31, which says if two lines are cut by a transversal such that two alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines are parallel, we just prove that that is the case. So what can we derive from this particular fact based on the indirect proof that we just discussed? All right, so we just said that uh, we have two parallel lines if we have alternate, exterior, alternate interior angles that are congruent. So now we know uh, line L is parallel to line M. So I have X here, here's an alternate interior angle. X is a value, right? And uh, X is another value. We know that those two values are the same. Well, I also know that uh, X and the other side of the transversal along line L, uh, these two angles, let's call this one and two. I know that X is gonna be supplementary to angle one uh, on line L and X is gonna be supplementary to angle two on line M. So I can say that uh, one is going to be equal to 180 minus X. And by the same token or the same fashion, I can say that uh, 2 is going to be equal to 180 minus x. Well, I also know that I have a bunch of vertical angles here. I have x here, and then I also have this angle here, which is equal to x, and this angle here, which is equal to x, and then I have this vertical angle here, which is equal to 180 minus x, and this angle here, which is equal to 180 minus x. And this spawns a whole host of theorems uh, based on just the proof of the alternate interior angles. And we're going to go through all those theorems in order. Okay. So the first is, I, uh, the first after the alternate interior angles are congruent, I can also say that alternate exterior angles are going to be congruent as well. So going back to my definition, I have alternate exterior angles here and here and here, and here. So my two pairs of alternate exterior angles are also going to be congruent. And that's going to be your th uh, theorem 32. So if I have two lines that are cut by a transversal, such that two alternate exterior angles are congruent, the lines are going to be parallel. So here I have angle 2 and 7. If they are congruent, then I know the lines are parallel. I'll call this L and M again. And then uh, if 1 and 8, angle 1 and 8 are congruent, then I know that L is parallel to M. So if I say if angle 2 is congruent to angle 7, then L and L is parallel to M. And you can write the shorthand alternate exterior angles congruent, then parallel lines. Okay, theorem number 33. So the third uh, theorem based on uh, the different types of angles being congruent. If two lines are cut by a transversal such that two corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So again, going back to our diagram uh, that we had before here. So if I have corresponding angles, I have corresponding angle, corresponding angles here and here. I have corresponding angles here and here. I have corresponding angles here here, and of course one angles here, and also here. So you can see that what we proved, again, by the alternate interior angle uh, theorem, so showing that if we had two alternate interior angles congruent, we have two parallel lines, how that spawns a whole host of congruencies um, uh, that 
that uh, establish the parallel lines. Okay, so here we have corresponding angles. So if angle one is congruent to angle five, those corresponding angles uh, are congruent, then I know that I have parallel lines. And then let's call this L and M. Angle one is congruent to angle five, then YL is parallel to M. Let's just make these lines here. Okay, so moving on. Several theorems to go through. If two lines, theorem 34, if two lines are cut by a transversal such that two interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary, the lines are parallel. So again, we've got to go back to our uh, a look at our, um, our diagram here. We have 180 minus x and x. So we know that if we have two angles that are on the same side of the uh, transversal that are, par or that are supplementary, then we know that we have two parallel lines. So here we have a set of two lines, 180 minus x and x. They are supplementary to each other. So we know that we have two parallel lines. Okay, so now I'm going to say if angle 3 is supplementary, let's say abbreviate supplementary with sup, angle 5, then so this is L and M without the arrows here. L and L is parallel to M. Okay, moving on, theorem 35. Uh, same concept as in the prior example, but now we have, if we have two lines that are cut by a transversal such that two alternate exterior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary, uh, or if two exterior, we should say two exterior angles, excuse me. If we have two exterior angles on the same side of the transversal that are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So again, if we go back to take a look at our diagram, we have exterior angles on the same side of the transversal that are supplementary. So I have 180 minus x and x here. So these two angles are supplementary, and we know that we have parallel lines. Okay, so if we have two alternate exterior, we should say again, it should be just exterior. So if we have two exterior angles, Uh, on the same side of the transversal that are supplementary, then we have parallel lines. So now if I say that <coughs> if, well actually we'll say that uh, angle, if angle one is supplementary, uh, two, angle seven, then L is parallel to line M. Okay, we're almost done here. I know this is long. All right, theorem 36. If two coplanar lines are perpendicular to a third line, then they are parallel. So we can go through the same process that we went through before in this case, but now we're establishing X is 90 degrees. So if we establish X is 90 degrees, we'll end up with this theorem, which just says that if two coplanar lines are perpendicular to a third line, then they are going to be parallel. And that's it. Thanks for paying attention.